Hey friends, happy Tuesday and welcome back to another What's for Dinner. I finally got last week's What's for Dinner edited and ready to share with you today. We had like two new meals, two or three new meals before we got sick and then the end of the week we were just sick and had like really easy stuff that we had on hand. So I'm going to go ahead and get into this week's What's for Dinner. First up on Friday night, we had this crock pot pork roast with gravy. I can't remember if we've ever had this before. It was on my Pinterest and I hadn't put it on the board of like recipes that we had tried before. Uh, but sometimes I'm really bad about moving things once we've tried them. But we just need to mix together two cans of cream soups. If you like cream of mushroom, you can do that, but I don't. So I just did two cans of cream of chicken and then one package of pork gravy mix and just mix that together really well and then I'm going to add in one onion that I chopped up and two cups of carrots that I sliced up and then on top of that I'm going to add about a three pound pork loin roast and then I'm going to season it on both sides the recipe has a pork seasoning that you can make to put on it but it's basically the same thing as a poultry seasoning I noticed that all of the seasoning that they used was in this poultry seasoning mix that I had so I just used that instead along with some pepper and if I make this again in the future I would definitely also add some salt I felt like the meat needed a little bit of salt the gravy was pretty salty because it's that cream soup but it definitely, the meat definitely needed to cook with a little bit of salt on it. So I'm just going to add that seasoning on there, both sides, and then put a lid on this and let it cook on low for like 8 to 10 hours. Then when it was done, I went in with some tongs and just removed the fat because mine had a big like slab of fat on one side. I could have cut it off if I wanted to, but the fat adds some extra flavor. So I left it on and then I just remove it after cooking. And then once I had all that out, I just went in and shredded up that pork. And as you can see, the gravy is nice and thick. And then I just served this over some rice. This was pretty good definitely like an easy throw together meal the only thing that I would change is to add some salt to the pork and then I think this would be a really good easy meal Saturday we had KFC bowls so this is really easy you just make all your stuff make a can of corn I just heated it up in the microwave honestly and then for gravy I always do a beef and a chicken package because I heard that that is like how to get the closest to KFC gravy at home then I cooked up some chicken tenders and I heated up some mashed potatoes that I had in the freezer and then we just assembled our bowls and topped everything with some cheddar cheese these are always good and like a quick and easy meal Sunday we tried a new recipe for some French onion ground beef sliders. I've had these saved on Pinterest for a while and I've been wanting to try them. So I started off by melting one fourth of a cup of butter along with some thinly sliced onions. The recipe called for two onions but I knew that we wouldn't want that much onion on this so I just did one onion thinly sliced and then also season that with a little bit of salt and I just let that cook for like 15 minutes until they started to get like nice and golden colored and then I added in my ground beef and just started cooking that up until it was completely browned Then I added in some minced garlic. I'm using the frozen kind, so I did it first before adding in any other ingredients. So then it could kind of like defrost in the pan and get mixed in really well. And then I added in some flour, got that all combined. And then I'm going to add in Worcestershire sauce, beef bouillon, and pepper, and give that all a good stir. And then let this simmer for about two to three minutes until the sauce is thickened. I will say in the future, I won't use as much Worcestershire sauce. This was heavy on the salty like Worcestershire flavor and I think it was just a bit too much uh, because we're going to add more later to the top of the sliders. 
So in the future, I would maybe half the Worcestershire sauce and maybe do like a little bit of water to make a little bit of beef broth. Once that has thickened up a little bit, then it's ready to go on our slider. So you can just turn off the heat and set it to the side. In a small bowl, I've melted one tablespoon of butter and to that I'm adding some sesame seeds and one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. I think I would leave out the Worcestershire sauce in this in the future just because, like I said before, it was like too much Worcestershire flavor. And I also did sesame seeds instead of everything but the bagel seasoning because Lily doesn't like everything but the bagel seasoning. But if you do like it, you could add that on here instead of the sesame seeds. Now I've just got my slider buns. These are the brioche rolls from Aldi. I always like to get those for sliders and cut them in half. And then I top it with that meat and onion mixture. And then we are topping this with some Havarti cheese. You could use Gouda or any type of cheese that you want, but I felt like the Havarti was really good with it. And then we put on our slider bun tops and then put on that butter mixture. And then I wrapped this in foil and put it in the oven on 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. You could serve whatever you want with this. I was planning on doing salad, but then didn't feel like getting out all of the salad stuff. So we had some spinach and artichoke dip and pita chips from Trader Joe's that I ate. Lily ate some tortilla chips and guacamole. Elijah just wanted tortilla chips. And Andy ate the spinach dip and pita chips as well. Monday night we had garlic butter steak bites and potatoes. This is an air fryer dinner that I've shared before and it's very, very good. We loved it the first time. I made it with a London broil and it turned out so tender and delicious and we had that with a salad. If you are interested in seeing me make that, I will leave the video where I made it like step by step in the description box down below. Next up, we've got this chicken pesto pasta. I'm going to start off by bringing some salted water to a boil to cook up a one pound box of bow tie pasta. Then in a skillet, I'm heating up some olive oil and then in that I'm going to cook up my diced chicken. You can season it with whatever you want. The recipe just says salt and pepper, but of course I'm not going to do that. So I did some salt and pepper, garlic powder, Italian seasoning. Uh, I think I did some onion salt. And I think that was it. And then just cook that up until your chicken is cooked all the way through. Once your pasta is like almost done cooking, I like to reserve some of the pasta water. So I went in and just ladled out about a cup of pasta water and set that to the side because we will use that to thin out our sauce if we need to. Once the chicken was fully cooked, I added in about a cup of grape tomatoes that I halved and let that cook for another two to three minutes. I kind of went in and like smashed those tomatoes to like get all the juice out and help contribute to the sauce. And then once I did that, I added in one jar of pesto sauce. This is like a eight ounce jar, I believe, from Aldi. I added in my cooked and drained pasta. And then I'm going to add in a little bit of that pasta water and a bunch of freshly grated Parmesan cheese and just continue stirring that until I get the sauce to be the consistency that I want. And then this is ready to eat. We served it just by itself. You could top it with more Parmesan cheese. You could have a salad on the side, whatever you want. But this was a delicious, almost one pot meal. You did have to boil the noodles on the side, but everything else was made in the one pot and it was really good. I can't remember if I'd made this before. I know I've made things similar that I've just kind of winged it on but this was really good and definitely a keeper and Wednesday is when we were like really in the thick of it with the sickness 
I had Andy bring home some more hearty tomato soup because we were down to our last can. He also picked up some good sourdough bread from Publix and we had grilled cheese and tomato soup. The kids liked ham on there so they did that and that was our sick day dinner and then we went back to the meal plan for Thursday. I made spaghetti with some salad and fresh veggies for Lily we were still sick, but spaghetti is like really easy to throw together. So we had that and then that was it for this week and we are feeling much better now. The kids still have like a lingering cough and I feel like I still sound like a little bit congested, but other than that, we all feel great and are happy to be done with the sickness. But that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave me a thumbs up and a smiley face down in the comments below and let me know if you plan on trying any of these recipes and since this video was late the grocery haul won't be up until probably Thursday so look forward to that on Thursday and that'll probably be the only other video this week I haven't decided yet but hope you all have a great week and I'll see you all in the next one bye